Time for another gamepad review. This is the Neo Geo wireless controller from 8BitDo in SNK, a modern attempt at a perfect wireless replica of the legendary Neo Geo CD controller. This controller's defining feature is its digital stick, which uses a microswitch-based miniaturized arcade gate. That means it's super clicky and tactile. As a fan of replica gamepads, I find that they can usually get away with an imperfection or a mistake here or there, but with this one, everything rides on the digital stick. So how is it? Well, it's complicated. Stick around to find out why. Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze. The long-awaited 8BitDo Neo Geo wireless controller is finally here, and the box reflects the company's usual high quality. Inside the box you get a deceptively simple instruction manual, a 2.4GHz USB-A dongle, a USB-A to C cable, and a USB-A female to USB-C male adapter. Here's the gamepad itself, and it is almost a total dead ringer of the original Neo Geo CD gamepad complete with the toothy black textured plastic. Despite being incredibly light at just 115 grams, it feels solid and high quality, which is just what I would expect from this company. At first glance, it feels like 8BitDo just nailed the retro look of this controller. It has the same flat but rounded look, but there are definitely a couple of notable differences between this and the original. The most obvious of which is of course the lack of any wire. This controller is wireless, but it does support a wired connection too. And up top, instead of the wire, you'll find a USB-C port for charging, a notification light, a sync button, and a couple of new additions to this classic design. Shoulder buttons. Along the bottom, you'll find the strangely Nintendo Switch-like connection lights. There's nothing along either side, and on the back there's an information label and a switch to toggle the pad between the 2.4GHz dongle connection and the Bluetooth mode. In the hands, or in my hands at least, the controller feels… broad. It's wide, tall, and completely flat all at once. I'm not really inclined to criticize this point because it's a replica of an old device, but I'd say that you can definitely feel that this design is old and dated by modern gamepad standards. On that note, I want to mention something in regards to the classic Neo Geo CD controller. When I worked in retail, there was one day when we had a Neo Geo CD in stock, and I was able to off and on play it throughout the day, and I was absolutely captivated by the controller's tactile clicky stick, and it definitely left an impact on me. However, that is my only exposure to that controller, so my memory of it may not be completely accurate. I did try and get a hold of one for this review, but I was unable to do so. So take my comparisons and my memories with a grain of salt, and let me know in the comments if I'm right or wrong about any of my takes. Anyway, when it comes to the controls, we'll save the stick for last, but the face buttons use a membrane connection that feels very solid and thunky. I absolutely love the large size of them, and overall I have no complaints at all. They're awesome. Truly old school face buttons. Even the colors, especially that mustard yellow on the B button, just feels very old school. The start and select buttons are rubbery and silent, much like the original, and the additional buttons on the front, star and heart I guess, are dome switches that feel, well, fine. The shoulder buttons have a similar thunky feeling as the face buttons, that is, if you press them from the outer edge, which you probably won't be doing. As you push down on them closer to the middle, the feeling and sound of them completely change. And if you press from the middle like this, they're much louder, and the right side has a weird clickiness to it, and feels and sounds totally different from the left side. Maybe this is pedantic, but the lack of a symmetrical feel kinda irks me. Alright, so let's finally talk about the clicky digital stick, which as I said in the intro is the most important part of this controller. And in my honest opinion, this stick falls very short in many ways. Yes, that's right, I do not like this stick. The first thing I noticed is how much throw there is before you hit one of the directional switches. In fact, there is about as much movement before the click as I would expect from a typical analog stick. You can easily move the stick in directions or circles without hitting a switch. And in actual gameplay, this translates to very slow transitions between opposite directions and broad sweeping movements for quarter or half circle inputs. It also means that your ability to react to fast prompts is reduced. For example, in one of my favorite Neo Geo games, Crossed Swords, which I previously described as a 2D arcade Skyrim, Enemies will signal their next attack just a second or so before attacking, and with this controller, I just cannot seem to react fast enough because of the stick's lengthy travel. On the other hand, with a tactile D-pad like on the Fly Digi Vader 2 Pro, I can react quick enough just fine. Another issue with the D-stick is the click itself. It is definitely not the same tactile snappy click that I remember. The sound itself is almost hollow and clangy. In a way, it sounds closer to a ping than a click.
I'm not sure if 8-Bit2 tried to dampen or quiet the sound or something, but I'm really not a fan of it. A more typical micro-switchy sound would have been much more preferable, and that's definitely how I remember this controller being. Nothing like this. On a similar note, the stick just isn't very tactile. With any substantial background noise or if I'm wearing headphones, the clickiness just kind of evaporates. I think that the clicking in each direction should be much more noticeable without having to go by the actual sound of the click itself. In my memory, the click actuated with around half of this travel distance and was very snappy, almost mouse-like. And that fast clickiness was what made the stick so great. It was more responsive than a typical membrane D-pad of the time, and also felt pretty similar to a micro-sized arcade stick. And to be honest, I think that neither of these things are really true with this 8-bit do revival. One last note on the stick is that the plastic cap is surprisingly slippery, and combined with the long travel, I find that my fingers tend to slip off repeatedly, especially when trying to use very fast-paced inputs. One final note on the stick, which is a little bit worrying to me, is that the up direction on mine is inconsistent and doesn't always actuate the switch when it should. And I have seen a couple of other people complaining about this as well. And an observation I made on my unit is there seems to be a very light click when I push the stick upwards before actuating a switch. I think it's the feeling of a spring buckling, but I'm not really sure. Anyway, it's not a huge problem, but I have noticed it a couple of times. And it does again give the up direction a slightly different feeling than the rest of them. I want to take a minute to make a few comparisons. Firstly, it's the Flydigi Vader 2 Pro, which easily has the best D-pad I've ever used. And there's a review of this thing coming soon too. See how quickly I can hit these inputs, compared to the relatively slower 8-bit do, and just how lovely and snappy it is. I can't help but find this to be a completely superior experience in clicky tactile inputs. Next is this module, which I pulled out of an old PDP fight pad for PlayStation 3. I took it apart to harvest this module in particular, and I hope that you can hear how clicky and satisfying this is. On this stick, you can easily feel each directional push in a very clear and snappy way, even without being able to hear it. And there is practically zero travel between neutral and a switch press, which means instantaneous inputs in any direction or in opposite directions. This module actually used the Neo Geo Pocket Color stick design, and is probably the best type of clicky stick I've ever used. Unfortunately, these old fight pads all used rubber coatings, which after aging became sticky and oily and gross. Hence, I ripped the stick out to prevent wasting it. Finally, here is my clicky stick, which I'm putting on my long overdue DIY handheld, the RB2H. I'm just using a simple array of lever arm switches. It's obviously a more DIY approach, but in my opinion, the clickiness is still more tactile and better feeling than this new Neo Geo pad. And now it's time for something a little bit unusual from my channel, which is a teardown. I really wanted to open this controller up and take a look at not only the stick, but also the shoulder buttons to see if I could figure out why they were so inconsistent. It comes apart easily. Just remove the four screws with a torque screwdriver, and the rest of it just kind of pops open. You might need a spudger or an opening tool, but there was no difficult to open clips or anything like that. And immediately after opening this up, I realized why the shoulder buttons are so odd. As you can see here, they use their own very small PCBs, which just mount a switch, which is connected to the main PCB with a couple of flexible wires. Maybe this is how the original controller did it, but I don't think it's a very good setup. Because of the way that the two connecting wires vary in their position and even length, it means that the shoulder buttons are always going to have a slightly different feeling. There's just no way to control how this PCB is going to shift when the button is pressed. Typically, I would expect the shoulder buttons to be connected physically to the main PCB with no movement at all. But here, the right one just doesn't sit the same as the left one. And so that definitely solves the mystery as to why the two shoulders are so different. If this is a design taken from the original controller, it's just one of those things where I think they should have updated it. And as I'm recording this, I realized it cannot be the case that these are the same design as the original, because the original didn't have shoulder buttons. So yeah, just a really odd and inconsistent design from 8 to here. I'm honestly quite surprised by it. Anyway, now it's time to take a look at the stick gate itself, and thankfully it's pretty easy to disassemble and take a look inside. Oh, but first I should mention that the stick itself has a square shaft and a ball on the bottom so that it can pivot. It also has this little notch that stops it from rotating. And after removing the plastic housing, you can see how this stick works. There are four upright switches, which have springs and a plastic piece connected to them. And these plastic pieces have filleted corners which allow them to sit together in a square. When you push a direction on the stick, it pushes the spring inward and actuates the switch. And this is more or less the same design as the original controller. The only strange thing here is that the sound is so much different, and I can't really work out why. 
I'm guessing that it's the type of spring they use is just different and creates a different sound, because pushing on this switch normally just using a spudger, it's nice and clicky. Anyway, this is about what I expected and based on pictures I've seen of the original controller, it uses more or less the same stick design. I was kind of hoping to find something radically different that would explain the clangy sound of the stick, but I'm guessing it's just the type of spring they used. I'd be really interested to swap these springs out with a different material and see how it affects the sound, but I'm not going to do that right now. Also, while I had this tear down, I wasn't able to find any clear indication of what was causing the inconsistency in the up direction. I thought that perhaps changing the spring for one of the others would change it, but it doesn't, so I'm guessing there's something wrong with the switch itself. But either way, I wasn't able to solve it with this tear down. For now, I'll just put it all back together, which by the way was a total nightmare. Due to how the springs and the little plastic pieces just ping each other out, it took me a good 10 to 15 minutes to get it all back together. But thankfully, once it was all back together, everything felt just like it did before. So, with all that out of the way, let's move on to connectivity. The 8BitDo Neo Geo wireless controller works perfectly on Windows and Android, either using the 2.4GHz dongle or Bluetooth, and either way the latency is about what I would expect. You'll obviously get better connectivity with the 2.4GHz dongle, but it's still completely usable with Bluetooth as well. It also works in a wired configuration if you prefer that, and it even works with the Neo Geo Mini which given the shameful analog stick that's present on that controller, should be music to owner's ears. One area it doesn't work is on the Nintendo Switch, which is pretty strange considering most of 8BitDo's controllers either just do, or are actually designed specifically to be Switch controllers. What makes the absence of Switch support so much more strange is the four LEDs on the bottom, which match the Switch's LEDs, and the presence of the heart and star buttons typically used for screenshot and home on Switch. I have heard rumors that Switch support could be added in the future, and even that it might already work if you buy a different dongle and use the beta channel update. But I haven't done this myself. It just seems obvious that this controller would work on the Switch, given SNK's massive library on the system. But right now, it just doesn't work, which is a real shame. The Neo Geo wireless controller has one more trick up its sleeve, and it's a pretty great one in my opinion. By holding select and either up, left, or down, you can map the digital stick to either the D-pad, the left analog stick, or the right analog stick, which means that you can use this gamepad in more modern analog stick based games if you wanted to. Despite my earlier opinions, the Neo Geo wireless controller isn't unpleasant to use by any means, and I still enjoy the feeling of using a clicky stick, even a fairly subpar one like this. Sure, it's not quite what I wanted or expected, but it is still just really fun to use such a classic controller, especially on its intended Neo Geo and Neo Geo Pocket games. In the same way that I love Nintendo's N64 and Sega Mega Drive controllers, playing with this classic Neo Geo controller and all the perks and quirks that come with it is just a really fun experience that is really enjoyable on a basic level. It's just kind of disappointing that the stick is not where it should be at all. So anyway, let me sum up my feelings on the 8BitDo Neo Geo wireless controller with my likes, dislikes, and final summary. Starting with my likes. I love the simple fact that a true successor to the original Neo Geo CD controller has been created especially after the awful Neo Geo Mini controllers. I like the retro styling with the toothy textured material. I love the huge face buttons and they feel great to use. It has a wealth of connection options available with 2.4 GHz, Bluetooth, and wired mode available. And the simple ability to map the stick to the D-pad or the left or right analog stick. It just expands the types of games that you can use this controller on. And it's a very thoughtful addition. And now for my dislikes. And the first one, and in my opinion the only one that really matters, is the stick. It's by far the most important part of this controller, and yet it just kind of misses every mark it's supposed to hit. It's not tactile enough, it has too much travel, and the sound it makes just isn't very pleasant. It's also worse than other attempts at a similar concept. And it's just not the same as the original controller was, at least by my limited memories of it. The stick cap itself is too slippery to be reliable with fast-paced inputs. The asymmetrical shoulder buttons. Maybe it's just me being pedantic, but I wish these two felt the same. The right shoulder button is noticeably different in feeling and sound than the left, at least when you press it from the middle. The lack of switch connectivity. I guess I shouldn't really put this on my dislikes, but I feel like this controller just should work with the switch, and it doesn't. One last nitpick, the small stylistic difference in the ABCD button labels. The thin, non-italic font on this one just lacks the character of the original controller. In summary, I think it's great that 8 BitDo brought this product to market and in many ways it's a faithful replication, almost to a fault when it comes to the somewhat dated design and ergonomics of old controllers. But they seem to have missed the mark completely where it mattered the most. The absolute most critical element of this controller was its digital stick, and in my opinion it's just not good enough. This should have felt, sounded, and worked identically to the original, but it seems like that just isn't the case. 
The stick has too much travel, the click sound is unpleasant, and it's just not tactile enough. It's not the worst replication ever. That award would obviously go to the infamously analog stick to Neo Geo Mini, but it's not perfect either. And in the end, I'm just left wishing that this controller was, well, what it was promised to be. Now it's your turn. Let me know what you think of the 8-bit do Neo Geo wireless controller in the comments below. Do you have one or are you planning to pick it up? Let me know, I'd love to hear your perspective. And if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I have at least three more gamepad reviews coming eventually, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss them. And that's this one done. This has been Shem from Retrobreeze, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you.